Okay, so hey guys, it's Quinston and today we are going to learn how to make an actual virtual machine. In this case, I'm going to make an Ubuntu server and I'm going to install all the server-like options on that server. So the first thing you need for that is the Oracle VM software, which is going to allow you to make the virtual machine. So we go to Oracle VM VirtualBox. You have this part over here, Oracle VM VirtualBox. Click on it. There's a big button, download VirtualBox 5.0 and you're going to click on it and it's going to start the download. Not really, it's going to show you a few options and you're to select the one you need so we need this one for windows host because i'm running windows right now so click on this and it will start your download and blah 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 blah, blah. the next thing is you need an actual os to run the vm so you go to ubuntu and just click on ubuntu os select that and run it and then you have this ubuntu leading os for pc and and you come to this page uh, go to desktop because you need a desktop version even though you're making a server you need a desktop version for this tutorial and then we have this option over here download ubuntu you click on it uh, we're gonna select the version 15.10 download and then you have this option to donate to the project if you want to donate and you have the money please donate and um, if not just click on no now take me to the download and you click on this and your download will start so that's the housekeeping stuff we need so the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to install the, the oracle vm software and then you're going to run it so you're going to click on new you're going to click uh, you're going to type ubuntu because hey why not it'll automatically you know configure your version and type or you can just do it manually it doesn't matter go next and you're going to select uh, the ram size i'm going to do 1024 which is the whatever <laughs> and then you're going to select what kind of hard disk you need so it says create a virtual hard disk now so I'm gonna I want to create one so create and you basically have to select one of these options usually you select the virtual disk image because it creates an image of the hard disk on your machine and you click on next so what do you do over here dynamic or fixed uh, you select dynamic save space next how big do you want it to be I want it to be 10 gigabyte why because I have space create um, okay so now this is created now before you do anything else I want to go into the settings I want to change a few things I'm gonna go into network I'm gonna go into bridged adapter and I'm gonna do allow all so why did I do this bridged adapter will basically bridge the adapter it means that it will allow your VM to share the same network as your host computer this is my Windows computer and when I select bridged adapter it will take the adapter from my Windows computer and the VM the virtual machine will get the same uh, kind of IP address it will be on the same network as that of my host so I can easily just SSH into it or use it as a server and so on and so forth so basically it's just you know to, to keep those both computers on the same network that's why we do this so yeah I mean do okay and then you start as you see we haven't selected a, an OS to run yet so what's gonna happen obviously it's gonna ask us uh, for something to start up with so I'm gonna do the browse option and I'm gonna go to where my OS is Ubuntu select Ubuntu and start and yeah that is it that is how you run this and now it's starting up okay so as you can see see we have this as uh, this page over here and it's running and that's a good thing it's running good job so we will select install Ubuntu and before you do anything I want you to uh, turn off the internet in this uh, just click on this disconnect just go into this option over here and disconnect because if you don't disconnect this uh, it will just go ahead and download the updates but I don't want it to download updates I'm just gonna turn off the internet now so it doesn't have any connections and I'm just gonna click on continue erase the disk or in, and install the one click on install and I'm gonna go uh, yeah, it's gonna install and it's gonna say if you continue the changes listed below will return to the disks obviously that's what we want so continue and then it will start the installation hopefully but it'll ask me where I am so I'm in Mumbai or I'm, I'm in Pune sorry <laughs> so there's no Pune over here continue yeah that's how it works okay select the language continue and my name is if you guess the password that's what the password is actually I want to log in automatically click on continue and that's how it is so it's now copying the files and it's trying to install everything so once you're done installing the software you will basically have this button over here which will tell you to restart click on it in the best of cases the operating system will actually restart but in some cases it will get just get stuck and won't restart because it probably cannot find the hard disk and and where the hard disk is located so what you will have to do in that case is that you'll basically have to power it off from here and uh, we'll just wait for a while okay it's not happening you have to power it off from here and you select this option power off the machine click on ok and then you have the machine over here you restart the machine and let's see what happens from there so congratulations 
if you see this window it means that you have successfully installed your virtual machine and now you can start working with it and turning it up into a real server so as you can see we have this uh, this internet connection over here if I go into the terminal control alt T I get this terminal over here as you can see it's kind of slow right now but it will get better after time type if config to give me an idea of what kind of network it's on and I can see it has an IP address of uh, 192.168.0.101 okay so the first thing I'll need to do is I'll need to update the repository in order to download the packages I need uh, to be on the machine so I'll first go and do sudo app get update and it'll ask me for my password I'll type it out and then we'll wait for this to get done okay so once you're done with the update you'll basically need to install something called the open SSH server so to install that you basically go sudo app get install open SSH server and open SSH client so these are the so these are the things you need in order to have your uh, your host SSH into this machine you cannot do that if you if you don't have this open SSH server installed once this is installed what you probably want to do is not use this machine and you want to go into your browser and and write bitwise bitwise uh, what's bitwise SSH uh, client so you basically click on it and go into this option over here click on it and this is going to help you to SSH into any remote server and uh, yeah that's going to be very helpful so you click on this option over here bitwise ssh client installer and it will basically allow you to download and install it so once you have that installed and it will start so this is the interface of the bitwise ssh client 6.46 and you'll basically want to ssh into your virtual machine from that um, from that interface so first I need the IP address so what's the IP address if config I have to do if config to get the IP address and the IP address is 192.168.0.101 so let's just do that 192.168.0.101 and my password is Quinston and my username is Quinston okay I messed that up and I click on login I'll basically you know log into it accept and save and it should just you know give me everything i need so uh yeah this is how that works and now i can just basically ls into this and it will show me everything that is happening inside the virtual machine so what is this so what did i do just now i basically am controlling the terminal which is this part over here in the vm machine from my uh, my host this is windows right uh, so whatever commands i run in this window will be executed on the virtual machine on the server so most people just use this to connect to the server because you know most servers don't have a graphical user interface pretty simple so th this is a script which I wrote in order to install uh, in order to install something on on a server so what are we going to install the for the first uh, time so we're going to install Apache PHP Apache so I'm going to go this file over here I'm going to say copy and then paste it uh, in order to paste something in the bitwise SSH you just right click so yeah enter my password and it's gonna just you know install everything I need every command that is executed in this window is basically executed in this machine over here so remember that that's important so Apache was installed on this uh, server I'll just clear it once and then you can see what happens then we have to take the second line and just copy and then paste and we'll basically install PHP with the lib2 uh, lib Apache 2 mod PHP 5 and this will basically give us the ability to run PHP code on the server. So yeah, everything is done installing. Now we'll have to go and check whether uh, we get the proper page we need in order to check if our installation is correct. We'll go into the VM box, we'll click on Firefox. So in here, in Firefox, if I type localhost. So yeah, well, if you get this page, it means that you have successfully installed uh, Apache. And that is the, the actual server. And uh, if you go into Windows, if you go into Windows, I go into the browser and I type the IP address of the VM machine I type 192.168.0.101 and I should probably get the same page see I got the same page so basically I can access that server from my host and the best part is I think this will work if you have a phone which is connected to your Wi-Fi router and your router is connected to your computer then you can actually access this virtual machine through your phone and that's pretty amazing right I mean the so this basically becomes like a separate computer which is on the same network as your phone as your host and as your well, everything else so yeah i mean if you want to install more things you can just take this uh this this particular script run it wherever you want to actually told how to install java i've written how to install jenny motion 
how to install MongoDB, how to install MySQL, and and you can just use this to uh, set up every single server you need to set up. I, I just want you to realize how, how, how powerful this is. You can use this for testing, testing your Android apps, but testing your websites, testing software which you write in code in, in, in the languages of Java and other things. You can use this to host your, your local databases and local file systems. You can use this as an FTP server. You can literally use VMware to do VM, sorry, VirtualBox, different companies, uh, to do basically anything you want to do. So yeah, I mean, just follow along this tutorial and I think you're good to go. So thanks for watching guys. See you later.